Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video for you about this little guy right here. This is the Nick Shabazz Modular Pen Knife and Sword Holder, uh, and this is a, a brand new thing that, uh, well, I have developed. But first off, before I go any further, I want to thank my Patreon patrons, who make it possible for me to do any of the work like this. Uh, they are absolute gems and lovely folks, and I also got to let you know that this was provided to me by the manufacturer, namely me. Uh, as always... I know that I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Uh, it might be a gem, it might be junk. I did still carry it upstairs. But nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys, because I would have taken a look at it before I took a look at it. And uh, I'm going to do my best not to let my own bias against myself affect the nature or the quality of this review. Next thing, let's go ahead and do some size comparison real quick. There you go. Uh, what we have here is your uh, Spydeco Delica, your uh, Spydeco PM2, and your Ontario Rat Number 2. And what you're going to see here is that this is, well, exactly the size needed for those three knives. Uh, what I have here, in all seriousness, what I have created here is uh, not so much an object, although certainly this... This is an object, but I have created a, a plan, a chunk of code, actually, an open scad, which allows you to generate uh, procedurally and according to your own needs a, uh, a device that holds pocket knives uh, or fixed blade knives, right? Um, that and that is this little guy right here. I will go ahead in just a moment and I'll show you how it actually works in terms of the code. But these are just objects, three-dimensional objects that you can then send off for 3D printing with whatever specs you would like. For instance, this one right here has some very specific qualities. It has the hole in the middle of it, which is uh, occasionally good, uh, and nothing else, save some weight and some filament and such. But this is designed to be able to hold a pocket knife, right? You got a groove here, you got a, a round part here, and similarly, you can put another one. This is the uh, Wee Knives Arrakis, uh, Arrakis, that is, and the uh, Eschaton. Uh, rest in peace there, Elijah. But you can see here, this holds these two knives with, uh, well, great abandon, right? And looks pretty damn good as you're doing it. You can also change the number of knives you're holding. This is one that is a three knife holder, right? Uh, here demonstrated for size comparison. I've made the base of it a little bit bigger because, well, it's holding three knives, and so that's more reasonable, right? And you can also change other parameters, like, for instance, the distance between this tier and this tier. This is maybe a little bit larger than I needed for a set of good old-fashioned pocket knives. You can also change which side the handle is on, right? So, for instance, on this one, I have the handle on the right, but if I was doing fixed blades, like, for instance, this beautiful vintage K-Bar from the uh, Korean War era sent over by my buddy Mike, uh, you'll be seeing a video about this guy later on, rest assured, uh, or this guy from uh, Micho, uh, uh, the, it was a Polish custom maker, um, but as you can see here, I've got this guy on a uh, on a holder which keeps the handle to the left, right? That's a, an object that you can choose. You can also create this such that it is uh, meant for swords, so you just have groove and groove on both sides. Or you can create it so it's for pens, so you have half circle and half circle on both sides. You can change the slope, I'll explain all of that in the video, but this is designed to be a thing that you can basically design for yourself. If you have need of a specific holder for a specific set of knives, you can make it even without a whole lot of coding skill, right? You just download the software, and then I'll, I'll explain how that works in a moment. So actually, let's go on ahead and do that. Let's pop you over to the software and let you take a look at what's actually going on behind the scenes, and then we'll come on back here. Ready, and boom! Greetings from some jackass's computer, and I figured I'd show you how this thing actually works and talk a little bit about how you're going to modify this. So once you download the file, you're going to need to get a copy of OpenSCAD. OpenSCAD or OpenSCAD is a program that is a free and completely open source, which is very important to me, program that allows you to make CAD, uh, that is computer-aided design and, and 3D objects, basically, from code. You're going to see here, this is the entirety of the thing. Right, This code just generates from math the shape you're seeing on the screen over here, with, of course, a render of the object, a render, that is, of the object over there, and then the code over here. And I'll go ahead and I'll keep scrolling slowly through it so that even if the GitHub goes down for whatever reason, you can still recreate this thing on your own, assuming this actually matters to anybody after GitHub goes down and it's not all posted. Up. Anyways, moving on. So what we've got over here is a, uh, well, we've got ourselves a, a device. We have ourselves a, a a, a three knife holder as currently configured, but maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, Nick, three knives, what kind of jackass has three different knives? <laughs> but you might want to make the thing a little bit smaller. You might change the number of knives. So to do that, you're going to look at this little chunk here. What this has is a preamble up at the top here. The stuff with the two lines is commented out. You don't need to worry about it. Just for your information. Then you got a bunch of stuff up here that you can change. You got some stuff in here that you can't change. 
Got one little bit that we'll talk about later. And then this is the actual code that goes through and creates all of this. And if you're a coder, you're going to realize exactly how it's going on and why I can change the number of knives pretty quickly. But anyways, what you can do is you can look in this top part here and decide, you know what, I only want two knives. So you change knife num here to two. Boom! There you go. Now it's just got two knives. Right, uh, you have the same kind of thing, but you got two. Maybe you want to go a little crazy. You want to go to eight. Okay, that was a little bit implausible because I didn't change the size of the whole thing. Watch, but if I change this and I make this 250 uh, millimeters, and by the way, all these numbers are in millimeters, uh, then what we have here is a ziggurat of knives, right? In theory, if your printer is large enough, you could totally print this. I'm not sure why you would, but you sure could, right? Uh, that is a possibility that remains for you here. But anyways, you can make that an arbitrary number, right? If you have six knives and you want them very separated, you can make this larger. You can make it smaller, right? Down that down to 200, right? That's a beautiful thing. And you can even make one that is just a single knife holder, right? You can take this all the way down to one. And what you're going to see here is that it can be relatively small. In fact, it could be much smaller than this still probably cut it down to what like 60 yeah exactly now you got yourself a single knife holder right although frankly who's just got one knife right what kind of what kind of thing is that but anyways we can pop this back up to two so you can get a sense of what's going on there everything else is also adjustable right so if we kind of zoom in here a little bit and we decide you know what uh, hold on open scat is charming when it comes to zooming if we decide to ourselves, you know what, I want there to be more rise between these two things. Maybe you have knives with handles that are very long. You can change that by modifying this number here, handle height diff. I can make that bigger. It helps if I actually use a different number. And what you're going to see is that not only is the lowest one higher up, but the one is higher above it still. Right? And so that gives you more in the way of ziggurattation, if you will, more stepping, uh, greater height differences between the two pieces. Right? I'm using 30 because that works pretty well, but if you've got really big, tall knives, then you might want to change that. Right? Remember, this is parametric. Right? You can also change the width of it. Right? Let's say that you're wanting to hold something that's really, really big. Uh, you might make it 200 millimeters wide, and so that gives you more spacing between these two chunks here, and that could be fun too, right? 150 has worked for pretty much everything I've had so far, but again, you can change it. I don't care. The uh, thickness of the base here is a thing you could do. If you really wanted to put something on display, you could really raise that base up for you, although I don't really know that you need to do that. Um, but you can do that, make that tweak. You can change the, uh, the, the slope, basically, of this outer edge, right, of that radius you can do, and you can make that, you know, if you wanted to make it really slopey, then you do something like that, and that's a possibility. But uh, again, probably don't need to tweak that. A couple of other things that are worth pointing out. Uh, the handle to blade fall gives you the angle between the handle uh, side, which is the thing with the cylinder, and the blade side with the notch. You can make that much larger and make the knife kind of slope down a little bit more. That is an option that you've always got there. Um, I, 13 millimeters has been working well for me. If you are using this for pens, uh, we'll talk about that later, you probably want that to be zero. But anyways, that gives you a, a way to set the slope. Your handle diameter here, I chose 25 on a survey of the knives in my collection, which is a lot, uh, let's be real here. But uh, that seems to hold most knives well without being too cavernous, hot dog down a hallway sort of effect, which is nice. But if you had a very specific kind of thing, if you have a collection of K-bar knives and you know that their handles are 30 millimeters, uh, then you can change that diameter and make that a little bit deeper. Uh, or, or you can make it much smaller, right? If you're working with pens, it's not unreasonable that you might want uh, a much smaller diameter there. Uh, so you have that as an option that you can always tweak. The uh, depth of the blade notch here is just the, the distance from here to here down at the bottom. Uh, doesn't really need to change that much. The width of it could if you have something that's incredibly thick behind the edge. You might, you know, tweak that out a little bit. Uh, but hopefully you don't because, oh my god, really? Uh, and then, of course, you can choose the, uh, the position of these supports if you want to do, and you can also choose the width of them. I've got them dialed to 20 because that's pretty aesthetic, but you can also make them a little bit thinner. I mean, you can make them real thin-like, but there's a point at which, like, I don't know if I trust that with anything too heavy. But that's an option that you always have, to choose the width of that particular support. A couple of other little tweaks you can make. 
Um, this is a little counterintuitive, but right now I have this set up for pocket knives designed for right-hand carry, right? Because you're going to want the, uh, the, the show side basically facing the user in this particular situation, right? So uh, I want the handle holder on the right side, uh, and I want the blade holder on the left. But if you're using fixed blades for a lot of people, or if you're carrying your knives uh, configured for right hand, uh, for left hand carry, that is, you might swap this around and you might move the handle to the uh, left. And so to do that, you just change the little things here from left to right hand, uh, and now it's swapped, right? So now you have it working the other way around. I actually, for whatever reason, prefer to keep fixed blades slanted in this direction, but prefer to keep my regular pocket knives slanted in this way so I see the show side. So that is an option that you always have. You can make that tweak without any kinds of difficulties. It's a beautiful thing. And then finally, the other thing that you could change, if you wanted to get a little crazy with it, right? Down here, if we look at the very bottom chunk, this is the chunk that actually creates the thing. Um, you're going to see there are two hand, there are two bits here. This generates the supports for the handle. You can tell because it has handle holder in here. This generates supports for the blade. You can tell because it has blade holder. If you, cre uh, if you basically change the uh, blade holder to another handle holder, you're going to create something that has two of these uh, circular dudes. And that could make this a really good choice for displaying pens. Right, And if you changed both of them to blade holders, you're going to have two of the uh, slotted guys, which could actually make this a decent choice for displaying like a sword of some variety where you want edge holding on both sides. Right, This is an option for you. Right, All you need to do is, well, either replace this with another blade holder or replace this with another handle holder, and you'll be able to pull that off. But that's how customizable this thing is. Of course, your mileage may vary. It may be difficult for you. And then at the end, of course, it's open SCAD, so it works just like that. You would, you know render the thing and then do a, a formal render of it and then you save that as an STL file which you can then move into your slicer program of choice for the 3D printer you have or you could send it off of course to a, a 3D print uh, creation shop where you send them a file and they send you back an object that gets pretty expensive pretty quickly and frankly 3D printers are getting cheap enough these days that you could probably just do that part on your own and still save some money if you're making any number of these but still uh, and then you get into 3D printing and yeah, I don't know if you should get into 3D printing or not. It's better than watches, but not by a huge margin. But anyways, this becomes an option that you absolutely have to be able to use this device. So anyways, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you, and I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to kick it back over to Desk Nick. Talk to you later. Bye now. So we're back. So basically, the goal here is just to have something that's available to the world. And the licensing is designed to that end. This is a Creative Commons attribution license, which means you can do whatever the heck you want with it. You just need to attribute it. You need to say, oh, this is based on this project here by the Nick Chavez, right? Um, that's all I really ask. If you are, of course, making something proprietary and commercial that wasn't before, then you are a dick and you are, well, why we can't have nice things. But that's not actually prevented from the uh, license itself. And my hope is that this will just be a resource for people in the knife community, whether that's knife makers going to shows and trying to find, you know, nice, uh, reasonably attractive and very cheap. This thing costs about a buck fifty to print in PLA plastic uh, using a printer at home. Mind you, that's, well, uh, well, I've gotten more than enough use out of the printer still, but, you know, printers ain't cheap. But still, um, you know, these can be very cheaply made and you can also be ha uh, have them made more professionally from, you know, uh, professional stuff makers uh, where you send them a file and they will just create it for you. If you don't have a 3D printer and don't want to get into that world. And by the way, I it's better than watches, but it's still a money pit. But it's it's a wonderful money pit. But this is just available to the community, and my hope is that people will find use for this, right? People will find an easy and cheap and do-it-themselves way to make a knife holder out of something that, well, they may already have at home if they are 3D printing enthusiasts. Or maybe a new store who's really having trouble getting started will be able to save a little bit of overhead by printing themselves a beautiful set of racks. It's just designed to be out there, right? So anyways, that's where it is. Um, like I said in the on the website there, if you want to make a donation, go ahead and donate to the Open SCAD folks, right? They're creating free and open source software that's very good for doing this kind of work and maintaining it on an ongoing basis. If you don't want to donate there, you can donate to your local DV shelter. And if you really, really want to give me money specifically, you can join my Patreon for a month, right? Uh, no, no 
harm done there. But anyways, um, that's what we got here. And uh, of course, there are an infinite number of variations you can do of it. You can make one with 15 freaking tears if you want to. I mean, have have, a, have fun with it. But I hope this has been interesting to you. And more importantly, I hope this will be valuable for somebody out there in the community. And hey, if it is, show me an email. Show me what you made, right? That, that's, it's cheap payment, but it'll bring me a little bit of joy to see, you know, uh, something that I made out there in the world. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, that it uh, is useful to you, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. I just can't stand ending these videos. Okay, bye now.